There I was, shredding the sweet pow of Norway, living the life I dreamed of. But one day, while reloading on that chairlift, it suddenly occurred to me. How does this work? So, I'm going to ask. Hi. Are they bra vi ska filma? Ah, ja. Um, jag är en elektriker från Storbritannia. Jag lagar filmer på Youtube. Kan jag få en liten omvisning här? Ja, kom in. Kom in film. And, uh, You're English. I'm English, so... Ah. <laughs> we can speak uh, the Queen ah, if well. you want. I'm Chris. Corey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. In here at the moment, we've just got a workplace. Basically, base where we repair all our equipment. Wow, we this is a we have. proper playground, this. Even the size of that spanner excites me a little bit, to be honest. So, what's your job here? Uh, I'm a mechanic here. Been here for three years now. I came over from Scotland. Awesome. Uh, you don't sound Scottish. No, I'm not. I'm English. Okay. Birmingham. <laughs> right. Oh, sorry to hear that. This is a electrical channel where I make videos about electrical systems primarily, but basically anything that I think is interesting. And sitting on that lift the other day, I was thinking, wow, this is seriously cool. Because it broke down, no offense, but as soon as it broke down, it flicked over to like a slightly slower speed and carried on. And so I was thinking, how on earth does that work? So what I was wondering, if we could get a little tour of the place, show us how it works, and that'd be amazing. Yep, we can do that. Main lift's outside, so let's head there. Can I be super, super cheeky and just have a dig inside that distribution board just through there? Uh, help yourself, go okay. ahead. So first thing to notice, 400 volts TNCS, a terra neutral combined separated system, which is interesting, isn't it? Because that's what we use in the UK. And a lot of time in Norway, they're using IT systems and different types. Again, beautiful example of what we should aspire to in England, paperwork already there. These very European style boards, which I really, really like. Schneider Vigis. For whoever's wondering what that is, comment that below. All right, let's go. It's a game of trying not to slip over. <laughs> I left my boots up there. I think Spring I snow's hard to walk on. It's super hard. It's like, what? It's like being like minus 13 at night. Okay, so here it is. So this is the, the lift station itself. Cresting up and over the top of that hill there. What I was wondering about, Chris, basically, is all this gubbins up here. I mean, I want to see the full control system, but I'm curious in seeing what's up there. Yes. Because that to me is very Thunderbirds-esque. Uh, yes, the whole system's controlled from inside that red building. Right, is there any controls at the top? There is controls at the top, but that's for the return station. Everything uh, down here is the drive station, so all the good stuff happens down here. Cool, right. Uh, so we can go and see that. Okay, so Chris here has taken us to the kind of mission command center for this lift. And I mean, when was this? Like sort of 90s or 80s or something? So you can see all the, the old analog dials, which are very retro and cool now. And then this is the, this is where basically, if you've ever been snowboarding, you see the guy in here controlling it. And if you're naughty, he hits that big red button basically and will kick you out of the park. But how does it, not that I've ever been, I've never been kicked out of a park. No, oh, I'm sure you have. No, I'm, I'm a dream, <laughs> I'm a dream guest. So how does it work, mate? So uh, from the substation, we have the power distribution. Right, okay. In the back room. Am I okay to go in there? Yep, yep. carry on. Wow, it's noisy. Might have to talk into your mic a little bit. Okay, this is um, where the power comes in from the substation. Okay. And is distributed to the drive station outside. Right. Uh, via our control room, yeah, uh, which is we've just walked through. Cool. So substation to here, yeah, here to in there. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And is there like a backup generator or a UPS? Uh, we don't have a backup generator. We have a backup uh, hydraulic system, cool. which is diesel engine driven. All right then. Right. Well, we'll have a look at that. I'll just get some snaps of, of this. So the power's come from substation into there. It looks like some kind of power quality analysis and whatever in there, maybe correction, and then into here, this control room. And that is displayed on what looks like this screen here, which looks pretty cool. I guess a visual overview of the lift. So you've got the main pulleys, I guess, here and here. And then each of the towers is also monitored, as you can see there. So if there was like high wind, 
something breaking or anything like that. Would that flash red, would anything happen there? So what we have on each uh, individual tower, uh, these are the individual towers yeah. that the rope is running over and we have a monitoring system which consists of uh, brake forks. Right, okay. If we have high wind conditions or a problem, these will break and stop the, stop the lift. Right. Uh, and pretty quickly as well. So and, uh, and then you just go and replace them if they so break? So, no, we have to make sure that we find a reason why it's broken before we can just replace them and start the lift again. So this brake fork, is that like, what, what whereabouts in the system would that sit? They sit on each tower and right. there's, there might be 15 or 20 of them on per tower. Right monitoring the position of the cables, the position of the uh, chairs. And if it, anything is out of position or um, failing, then these will break and stop the lift for us. And when you say stop, would it still, it, what if people are stuck up there, would you have to go rescue them or would they get lowered down on the hydraulic that, slower system? That depends on what the fault may be. If it's a power supply um, failure, then we can run the backup uh, engine and hydraulic system right. to run the lift which will be at half of the um, normal speed which is around about two meters per second but if there's a mechanical failure in the system somewhere then we can't run on either electric or hydraulic then we would have to evacuate people um, using ropes and harnesses. That's yeah. pretty cool. Well, I mean, it's not cool. That's probably a bad day for you. Yeah, but that would be a very bad cool. day. Yeah. <laughs> so this Wouldn't is the, like, the HMI, and I'm guessing that in there is where all the actual magic is happening. Let's have a little dig inside of here. So you just got, I guess, a whole load of PLCs and drives and relays and basically an awful lot of controls but i guess when you're dealing with something where you got a lot of people suspended in the air dangling you probably yeah. want it to be yeah you do safe yeah. and this is our normal controls which are um linked to the pc yeah and then we have a panel that's not linked to the pc which is just the uh, if everything goes if wrong if everything panel. goes wrong yeah cool stuff so this is for the hydraulic side of it yes are we able to have a look at that hydraulic system yes once we go up in the station uh, so we can show you, you what's uh, what's in there when you say in the other station is that up yeah so the um station the drive station everything happens outside and above the actual lift oh, that sounds uh, so cool inside the inside the protective building all right should we do that yep let's go sweet This is the like, this is where the magic happens basically. Welcome into the top station. So uh, this is the drive top station. Seat. Sorry, the drive station. Um, this is where the whole system comes together and yeah. uh, transports the customers up the mountain. The first thing would be uh, how the system is driven and where that starts is a bit further down the end there. This is our electric motor that drives the whole system. Right. Um, powered from the uh, panels downstairs, yeah. then transferred to a very large disc brake uh, and then into our drive gearbox. This is a hydraulic motor and reduction gearbox. The main drive, however, is from our uh, big red gearbox here, yeah. and our output shaft is directly out the middle of that. I'm hoping you heard at least some of that because it is so noisy in here. Yeah, it's really but noisy. I'll come back later when it's switched off and we'll do another quick run round it just to make sure that we got some of it. Okay, so we tried our best, didn't we, to, we film, did. to yeah. film here earlier and Chris gave an absolutely fantastic tour but I'm pretty sure that the audio was absolutely shocking because it's very noisy in here. Yeah, it's really noisy. Um, but maybe we can just keep that for comedic value but we'll cut to this now and if you want to just show us around again. So the, 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 the chairs come in here, they Correct. get stopped by these wheels. So they come in and uh, at about four meters per second. Okay. And we need to slow that down uh, so people can get on. Because I, I feel like four meters per second, that doesn't sound that fast, but when I was seeing them coming yeah, through here earlier, it's, it's, fast, it's rapid. It's, it's pretty fast, yeah. 
Um, and I suppose not slowing it down too quickly so that people go flying off the yeah, chair. Yeah, well, we want the chairs to slow down gradually. So each wheel is uh, rotates at a very um, a much more slower speed than the one in front of it. Yeah. So it gradually slows the chair down as it comes in. So that's uh, as well as here. Yeah, that's what you'd have seen spinning earlier. Uh, so it comes in and starts slowing down as it gets to roughly this position where it's still going quite quickly. Yeah. It detaches from the main rope. Yeah. The clamp opens, it comes off and then it keep, continues to slow down as we go through all the way to this point here in the station. And yeah. then it stays at, a, at a, about half the speed of uh, about two meters per second, oh. uh, basically at this clutch unit here. This little clutch thing going on. Um, and then it continues round. I bet that was an engineer's dream to pull that apart and oh, start fixing that. It's difficult, there's a yeah. lot to do. You have to start at one end and move your way down. Oh, you can't man. just go in the middle as no. such. Uh, so it's quite a lot of work to get just one unit changed. But yeah, as the chair comes around, uh, people get on roughly the, in I this position. People will get on the, to the chair. The chair will slowly move out around the station and into the outgoing side of the station. It matches the speed of the rope, so four meters per second. And then the clamp clamps back onto the uh, rope, the yeah. whole rope and out the station it goes. So you see there, my understanding of it is, I'm gonna pretend like I know this and mm -hmm. I've not had a tour already. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got the, the tension rope or whatever you called it. The, the whole rope. The whole yep. rope that goes round. So that's this big, thick metal wire that goes round and that's what all of the, the, yep, chairs, the chairs sit yep. on. That is driven by this massive big ball wheel, ball wheel underneath yep. there, which is, connected onto this. Yes. So this is the main drive gearbox. Right. That uh, has an input motor uh, and, a, and a brake, a big disc brake like in your car, but a lot bigger. And then the so, main gearbox. And that earlier was spinning seriously fast. Yes, that's why it's um, encased. Yeah. So if anything ever happened to it or bits of oil or anything came off it, then it's encased inside it's that encased, glass. Yeah. So you've got the main sort of electric motor here. Yeah. Going through that disc brake. Yeah. Going through into this drive. Into the drive. And the drive uh, has a vertical shaft in the going through the center. Yeah. And then that's directly connected to the center of the yellow wheel beneath our feet. Right. The ball wheel. Got you. Which is, uh, has the rope on the outside and that that's what drives the lift. And, and if there was a power outage? If we of, had a... Which I imagine up in the countryside, out here is very we do, common and We possible. do get them, uh, I'd like to say they were uncommon, but they're, they're not too uncommon. We have an emergency drive, which is up here. So that's, I'm guessing this, this generator here. So we have a diesel engine, and on the opposite end of the diesel engine, there's a hydraulic pump. Yeah. Um, so the hydraulic pump supplies our emergency drive motor, which is back down the other end. So it's some kind of variable displacement yep. onto this hydraulic motor. And then we have this hydraulic motor um, and a gearbox, and that connects into the outside gears on the ball wheel. Right, uh, you can just, it, uh, just about see it so hard. We can get. lift it and you can... Yeah. And what Chris was explaining to me earlier is depending on how many passengers are on there at any one time is how much tension they need in the whole rope. And that's adjusted here by this big hydraulic piston looking thing, which I find just awesome. Cause that's something I never even thought about as yeah. being necessary. Yeah, it is definitely necessary to keep the tension the same in the rope at all times. Yeah. And that's how it's done by this hydraulic cylinder. Let's have a look at that big cog yeah. then. So, you can actually see it there then. So that's what this hydraulic pump connects onto if the electric motor fails. Yeah. So it just sort of manually turns it round. Yep. Amazing. Uh, at half the speed. And the question everyone's going to be wondering, you know the awful scenes you see of uh, chairlifts failing and people getting flown off? 
Is that possible here? Uh, here, hope not. Fingers crossed that never happens. <laughs> um, but if we had a mechanical brake uh, where we couldn't run the lift, either on the emergency drive or the electric drive, yeah, we would have to uh, lower people off the, each individual chair. Right, so there's no chance of it spinning backwards. These motors have some kind of stop on them. To... Yeah, they have an internal stop to stop that from happening. Right, amazing. So, That's good for yeah. people to know. So when that happens, it's a series of mechanical failures and user errors. It's not just, Yes. it's yeah. not very likely that you're sitting on the lift in Seardale that you're gonna be flown off backwards. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's right. never gonna happen. That's why they hire British engineers. To yeah, out, <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> Are we all right to look at the top? Yep, now we've finished explaining down here. We'll head to the top. We can either take the chair or we can take a snowmobile. That's up to you. Chair or snowmobile? Yeah, whichever you prefer. Well, the episode is about chairs. <laughs> so I feel we should take the chairs, but I've never been on a snowmobile before, so... Well, we'll have to take the snowmobile then. So, I know we're supposed to be making a video on chairlifts, but if someone offers you to ride on one of these, if you say no, you're crazy. Yeah, this is the only way to get round in the winter, really. Yeah. This okay. is the funnest way. Yeah, this is. Oh. So let's uh, head up to the top. Try to jump on the back. Yep, jump on and let's head up. Is that the ramp we're jumping up? Yep, that's the one. That's just the snow from clearing out the station. That is going down as one of the funnest things <laughs> I've done in a very, very long time. Ah, that's good. All right, well, I mean, if anyone wants to send us an Arctic cat for reviewing, I'm happy to rag it around Bournemouth. <laughs> this is the top, basically. Take these off. Oh, my days, it's blinding. Basically, this is the top. So down the bottom of that long, long run that we've just come up, there's that big pulley wheel, and that's pulling what's called the haul rope. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And that haul rope then comes to here. Now, are there any smart sort of controls or motors or systems up here, or is this basically just a dumb pulley? Uh, this system up here is taking the chairs off the haul rope. Right. Uh, it's detaching that clamp. It's then slowing the chairs down uh, to somewhere near half the speed uh, of normal. There is a system uh, up here that keeps the distance between each chair the same. Should we have a look inside? Yeah, let's go and have a look. Ah, oh, so this is the view. That's not a bad office view at all, that, is it? Out over the mountains. And then this looks like the same, so, yeah, just it's basically the same display as what was down there. We have the same display that's down there. The only difference being that the um, if there's any faults in the system uh, up here, they will tell you up here. And right. if there's any faults down the bottom, you can see whether they're at the bottom or up here. Right, okay. Yeah, um, awesome. so it's basically the same. And then there's that pulley wheel up there that we we're talking about, which basically just spins round holding that tension rope. I mean, do you have to like take that off and oil it from time to time? Uh, yeah, every 15 years. You're talking just like spray some WD-40 in there or? <laughs> yeah. It's, um, we have to replace the bearings uh, every so, so many uh, uh, years. Awesome. As part of normal maintenance. This, is, this one has been done uh, uh, not too many years ago. Yeah, awesome. Wow. So this is like almost the same as the other side except without the machinery. Yeah, this is exactly the same but without the drive machinery the electric motor the gearbox and the uh, backup uh, hydraulic diesel powered um, emergency drive awesome so i follow you yeah yeah uh, let's go the opposite way yeah so again this is the incoming side so the chairs are coming in at uh, four meters per second yeah again we have the same sets of wheels which slow it starts slowing the chair down yeah uh, the chair comes off the line, the clamp uh, uh, opens, the chair comes off, it slows down as we walk through. So then the haul rope is able just to go freely round the ball wheel. Uh, and that's being driven from the bottom station. Right. Um, chairs continue round just like at the bottom. 
But this time, instead of people getting on at this position, they're getting off. Right, okay. Uh, to enjoy the rest of their day. Yeah. And then it will start picking up speed, back to normal speed again. And as we get to about this position, the clamp closes back on the line and out the station it goes. And so that's that, the return station. It's like a giant conveyor belt with lots of high-risk items on it. Yeah. <laughs> very can be very high risk. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of baggage on that system, especially when I'm on there. Yeah, there is. Uh, and then each each tower has the safety systems on it, like we showed you at the bottom station, with those brake forks. Unfortunately, you can't go up the tower because so each we're... one of these towers has that brake fork on it that you were yes. talking about earlier. Yeah. And where would they be? Like kind of just so random if places, you were, or if you were to follow the chair as it approaches the tower yeah and as it goes over each wheel yeah in between the wheels there's brake forks so there's brake forks on each one of those um, and there's slightly different towers as well there's wheels on top and wheels below uh, and then the brake forks are above and below yeah. cool so that's how this system works then pretty much yeah that's the simplest way to explain how this system that works. That is the how a chairlift works for dummies. Yes. But that's not it because, sorry, I'm completely blinded, because um, the, the job of a mechanical engineer in a place like this is not going to be just fixing lifts. It's got to be basically, if something goes wrong, you've got to get it working again because you're responsible for a lot of people's safety and lives and yep. keeping the park moving and making money as well. So. Yep, exactly. And yeah. there's a drag lift, sorry, a um, groomer, which if you're familiar with snowboarding or skiing, you know what that is, but Basically, it's just something that grooms the slope to make it nice and smooth again, ready for the going over. Um, but one of those has broke down and you're going to go repair it. Yep, we're so. off to repair that in a few minutes. And I've asked him if I can tag along and he said yes. So, let's do it. So we've arrived <laughs> in one piece. Know, that was probably the funnest in. commute to a job I've ever had in my entire life. Oh, that's good. I'm here to help, <laughs> and please. So this is the thing you've got to fix over there, the groomer. Let's have a little look. Go and have a look at. So this is a piston bully snow groomer. So this thing scrapes the snow and makes the pattern in it. For... Are these not terrifying to drive up really steep hills? Uh, it depends how terrified you get of steep hills. If you like the flat and you get terrified of crossing the road, then you stay out of one of these. That doesn't look like that's a quick fix for you tonight. Oh, this will be a couple of hours work. Okay, so that down there has failed. Well, that's the new one, which they've this, swapped out while we've this, been. This uh, final drive for the track um, failed internally uh, a couple of days ago, and we've fi uh, got ourselves a new one from the manufacturer. So Hopefully. do you literally fix everything here? Yes, like, everything. There's awesome. nothing that we, well, the only, the only things we don't touch is high voltage, high uh, voltage. installations. Right. Um, we have to be, uh, we have to get people in to do that yeah. uh, by law. So. I think I accidentally met the people that do that for you recently. Oh, did you? Yeah, I was doing some work with the company in um, Sula. Nice. Hi. Hi. Uh, Hi. question, uh, what do you guys uh, film for? Oh, uh, it's for an engineering YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. Which you just got in the shot of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll leave you guys to crack on, but thank you so much for showing us how that all worked. And I, I guess thank you especially, Chris, yeah. for, for no that. Worries. Nice um, to meet you. No, nice and, to meet you uh, too. Pleasure to show you around. Yeah. Cheers, man. Yeah. I need to be this close to the fire because it looks good for the video, but it's burning my lung holes out. <coughs> but it's nice because you can see this. I think it's really bad for cat. Oh, I see it's sarcasm. Right. You can't see this, but there are fantastic stars up above. But take my word for it. If I was to describe it poetically, I'd say it's black with lots of little speckles of, of white.
Um, if you've not been able to get yourself out to Norway, then you should. And Norway, or the Stats Minister or Prime Minister of Norway, whoever you are, if you're watching this, then feel free to sponsor me to come back and make a proper video here, because I will. Anyway, <coughs> I need to get away from this fire. Next time you're on a chairlift doing some kind of snow sports, spare a thought for all the engineers and all the people that are working behind the scenes. Because uh, I thought it was pretty awesome. Maybe not everyone thinks it's awesome. I thought it was very interesting. And a massive thank you to Chris and uh, to also to all of our video sponsors whose links are below for making it possible. For now, say... Die. Nesta Gang. Say die, Nesta Gang.